All right, a little bit about the so-called normal distribution. This <clears throat> distribution, we haven't talked any th about uh, specific types of distributions yet. We've talked about the frequency distribution and that <clears throat> table and that sort of thing. Well, uh, the normal distribution is uh, a special type of distribution, and it occurs uh, naturally, I guess one way we could say it. It just occurs a lot in statistics in, well, in life. Uh, as far as uh, distributions go, it's one of the most frequently occurring type of distributions. And the uh, kind of the distinction of a normal distribution from another distribution is that the normal distribution has a what's called a bell-shaped curve. In other words, the graph of a normal distribution has the shape of a bell. So it's the bell shaped graph or curve. That's the distinction to be made between it and other distributions. It's a bell shaped curve. And so we get to draw several of these bell shapes. Now, <clears throat> what, uh, of course, what we're talking about along the bottom here, of course, we've got a middle there, but along the bottom is, you know, you just have the values of your distribution or, or marks uh, for certain, certain ones of the values. Um, but uh, we'll talk about <clears throat> all this. Now, you might note here this is not a bar graph. It is a smooth, continuous, we would say, graph. And technically speaking, these, these lines out here, they, they keep progressing towards the, the line here. <clears throat> but technically, they don't ever stop. I mean, the, the lines just keep going infinitely out there. I mean, it's not very wide out there. But anyway, obviously, you can see, and then, of course, the the height of the graph is kind of your frequency, how frequently uh, occurring each value is. So which, just to ask you this, which of the values on this graph are most frequently occurring? Where, where, are, your most free, where are most of your values at? Well, if this... The most values would be in the middle, wouldn't it? Um, there's a few values. You know, there's not very many out here. The graph's not very tall. Um, so there's not very many values out on the ends. Most of them are in the middle there, and we'll speak to that more in just a second. All right, but yeah, <clears throat> a couple of things about uh, the normal distribution. Like I said, number one, it is uh, s smooth, and the other point is that it's symmetric. It's a smooth and symmetric bell shape curve. Now, what, uh, what, what do I mean by symmetric? Symmetry. Symmetry just means same on both sides. Same on uh, half of it, it's the same on the other side. So if I kind of draw a line down the middle, what this is saying is that these are they're the same on either side. This side is the mirror image of this side, and vice versa. So it's the same on either side. Okay? I'll speak more about that in just a second. All right. <clears throat> yeah, obviously there we have <clears throat> the highest points in the middle, and the highest point is in the middle, and it's the mean. Of this distribution. Highest point is in the middle, and the highest point is always that mean. I mentioned last time about the uh, the mean being the average, but another way you can think of the uh, the mean is it's kind of the balancing point. So if I was going to think of these as a weight, and I was going to balance it on my finger, I'd balance it right in the middle. So yeah, there's a number of reasons why 
the mean, the average has to be in the middle. But the mean is always in the middle. So we can always label that point in our graph in the middle. Okay? And then one other point is uh, we're going to be talking a lot about percentages of values under the curve. <clears throat> Just point out here the total area under the curve is 1. Or 100%, okay? <clears throat> the total area under the curve is 1. And what we might do is break that up into the, the uh, down the middle there. So what, uh, what percentage would we have over here to the right of the mean? 50% on the right of the mean, 50% are, are less, yeah. And that's <clears throat> kind of what we're going to be what we're going to be focusing on. You know, you can you can think of the area under the curve in a lot of different ways. Um, you, you know, you can think of them as percentages. Um, we could think of that as decimals. So we could say the area, <clears throat> this percentage, the percentage of value. So what this means, what Particularly, this would mean 50% uh, to the right of the mean would mean is that 50% of the values are more than the mean. That's what this would mean. Fifty percent of the values are more than the mean, and then of course this would mean 50% of the values are less than the mean. Okay, so kind of make that connection between area and percent, okay? This, we're saying this percentage is 50%, or we could also say the area under the curve there is 0 0.5, or it's 50% of the area under the curves, however you want to think of it. But percentage and area is the same thing. Now, uh, <clears throat> let's say whatever distribution it is, if I were to ask you, if I were going to select one value uh, from this distribution, what would be the probability I select one that's greater than the mean? What would be the probability I would select one that's greater than the mean? 50%, okay? So we'll also have a couple of problems where they ask you about probability, but probability is the same as percentage. So uh, <clears throat> this area is 50% or 0.5, and the probability that a value is greater than the mean is 50% as well. So what I'm getting at here, probability of value, is greater than the mean, is 50%, 50 percent, or 0 0.5, 0.50, okay? So what I'm getting at here is if a problem asks you for area, it's going to be the same as it's asking for percentage or probability. Area equals percentage equals probability. Those are all the same. They're all asking the same thing. If we want to find a percentage, we want to find the area under the curve. If we want to find the probability of something happening for the normal distribution, we want to find the area under the curve. Okay, So that's, that's going to be the name of the game. What is the area under the curve? Because they're not always going to be to the right of the mean or to the left of the mean. We'll use that some, but that's not what it's always going to obviously work out to be. So, All right, here's, here's the type of question we're going to be asked.
All right. Um, <clears throat> let's say I I know this. Let's say uh, from uh, seven to nine, my values. I've got. Uh, oh, let's say that's. Uh, 30% there, and then from 9 to 10, that percentage there is uh, 15%. I'm just making those numbers up, in case you're wondering. <laughs> but here's the type of question we're going to be asked, <coughs> asked to do. Uh, first of all, can you tell me what, I haven't told you anything about this distribution, but what's the mean of this distribution? Can you tell me that? This is a normal curve. The mean is 9, yeah. This is the mean. I'm kind of going at this problem backwards from what we usually do. I'm giving the graph. You'll uh, supply the graph uh, on these regular questions. But here's what we're going to be. Say we know <clears throat> that the uh, these percentages. What does this 30% mean? That means there's 30% of the values between 7 and 10, right? I mean 7 and 9. <clears throat> you with me on that? Whatever these values are, and that brings up another point, in a normal distribution, you know, we have been working with distributions where you can get 1 and 2 and 3. Some of them have decimals, but please note here on the normal distribution, you can get 7s, you can get 7.1s, you can get 7.2s, you can get 7.25. You can get, theoretically, any value, decimal, fraction-wise, any value uh, is possible on a normal distribution. In other words, you're not just limited to 7, 8, 9, and 10, and 11, 12 here. You can get 7.1s and 7.2s. This is it's a continuous distribution, meaning the values, you don't just get fixed fixed number of values. So anyway, that's kind of a side point. <clears throat> but do you see what I'm saying here? Since this area here is 30%, 0.30, then that means 30% of the values are between 7 and 9. What does this mean? 15% are between 9 and 10. Okay. So if you understand that, that's, that's kind of what we're... <clears throat> So 15% are between 9 and 10. Okay? So if I were to ask you what percentage of values are between 7 and 10, what would you tell me? Add them up, yeah. Yeah, since I know 7 to 9 is 30%, and I know 9 to 10 is 15%, wouldn't the, the percentage of values between 7 and 10 be 30 and 15 added together? So that's kind of the idea we're going at here when we're doing these problems, okay? <clears throat> With a few twists, of course, along the way. All right? <clears throat>